we are in the midst of a pretty big pattern change across most of the southeast what's going on guys i'm certified meteorologist jonathan kegas in this video we're going to talk about why the pattern is changing why we're seeing more storms around for some of the state of florida anyway and then we're going to fast forward into the weekend there's going to be a tropical wave surging in from the southwest atlantic not expected to develop or anything like that but it should increase rain chances for a lot of the state then we're going to break down the zones and talk about the forecast for your friday and then we're going to have that full tropical update there are still three waves to watch in the atlantic we're going to break all that down and check in on those development chances before we get into the video and take a look at the crazy dry air plunging into the panhandle hit subscribe if you want to stay updated to all things weather in the state of florida if you happen to find this content helpful or informative please give it a thumbs up it really does help us out a lot all right so here is the dry air we have a cold front right through here we have that drier air spilling in you see the big dip in the jet stream right here that bowling ball sliding to the north of memphis to the southwest of roanoke all that dry sunny air through atlanta into shreveport that is going to be moving through the panhandle parts of north florida as well it really doesn't sneak down to central and south florida but what it's doing for us is it is guiding those storm chances right smack dab into the gulf coast especially where we really need the rain i'm gonna have a drought update for you as well but here we go you see that motion all of that tropical moisture from the Gulf of Mexico starting to surge through. You can kind of see if you look to the bottom right of your screen, I'll draw the arrow here. This is the start of our little tropical wave that'll help to enhance rain chances as we get into the upcoming weekend. Stick around closer to the end of the video in the next few minutes. I'm going to have time codes in the description. So if you're looking for a special part of this video, an exact part, you can click around and it'll take you right to where you want to go latest drought monitor from the united states department of agriculture this comes out every thursday morning at eight o'clock it takes into account the rain from the previous week all the way up through tuesday and we are still in that extreme drought from bradenton to sarasota st petersburg we are in that severe drought all the way to st pete beach tampa we are in that moderate drought that's all the way up to spring hill as well fort myers through marco island we are continuing to be in that abnormally dry category and that is because of that pattern that is really dominated abnormally florida for the last couple of months really through the summer that big area of high pressure that's really been right over the gulf states the north gulf coast it's the reason why for the big time heat we had last week that has gone out here i do have at least some relief in sight over the next 24 hours this is through friday at least and you see some heavier pockets of rain it's not a lot but if you get caught under one of those isolated storms see especially around sarasota or bradenton you can pick up anywhere from a half inch to an inch maybe even a couple of inches of rain but note towards the panhandle i think through the next couple of days because of that drier air that i just showed you we will stay on the drier side so here is future radar for the state then i'm going to zoom into central florida and then we're going to break it down from north to south florida in terms of the forecast for friday so there you go at four o'clock on thursday those scattered thunderstorms going to continue through a lot of central florida these are then going to really push down towards lake okeechobee toward bell glade toward fort pierce into fort lauderdale as well hanging on to south central florida just a few light showers in and around the orlando area by six o'clock that extends up into sanford towards palm coast into cedar key most of that rain then pushes down towards the southern tip of florida here we go at six o'clock in the morning on friday don't be surprised especially closer to the gulf coast if we're dodging some scattered storms early on that is because again that motion of the jet stream kind of dragged right here forcing all of that tropical moisture from west to east so you see the increasing rain chances again towards inverness towards uh, sumter county towards marion county and into st petersburg as well note though we are still nice and dry from Pensacola toward Tallahassee and Jacksonville. North Central Florida going to be dry because we're under the influence of all of that drier air. So that's Friday through 10 o'clock. We have more scattered storms, though towards central and south florida kind of lingering late want to give you a closer look here at some of the storm chances for central florida so this is four o'clock on thursday the trend with this is to kind of get these storms at least the thunderstorms kind of winding down as we get towards six seven o'clock and then kind of 
getting on out of here as we move towards 8-9, which is the few lingering stray showers around. This is what I was talking about again for early on Friday. Don't be surprised if there are a few scattered downpours and thunderstorms around Denellen, the villages, Ocala, uh, Tampa, St. Pete, especially, especially along and west of the I-75 corridor closer to the Gulf of Mexico. And then we're going to kind of do it all again. There's 2 o'clock on Friday as we increase that scattering storm chance from Bushnell into the villages, uh, Eustis through Mount Dora, Sanford into Geneva, Chuliota, and you see more of those storms kind of fire back up. There is 8 o'clock. Some of these could linger again right along I-95. The East Coast Sea Breeze gets a late start. And the reason for that is, remember that upper level flow coming west to east because of the jet stream keeps the East Coast Sea Breeze pinned right along the East Coast until very, very late. And that's why we see that late resurgence there of the East Coast Sea Breeze. Highs tomorrow, upper 80s, lower 90s. So we're closer to where we should. We're not talking about pushing 100 degrees like we were almost every day last week. So we've backed off of that record-setting streak that we had, and now we're back to that typical Florida heat. So again, if anybody tells you last week was, oh, that's just a Florida summer, it wasn't. It was record hot for a lot of Central Florida. All right. In terms of North Florida, we're talking about upper 90s because we are seeing the sunshine. 96 in Pensacola. Look at the rain chances. Big old goose egg through Panama City. Just a slight opportunity for a shower into Lake City. Now, storm chances increase significantly the further south once you start getting towards the peninsula part of Florida. You see 40% shot towards Gainesville. And then especially Cedar Key, we're back up to that 60 to 70% shot. Because, again, that west to east flow, that motion off of the Gulf of Mexico, back towards central Florida. Again, our higher storm chances towards Daytona Beach, Cape Canaveral, Orlando, 60% chance for storms. Tampa, same deal. Same in the St. Pete Beach and the Lakeland Vero Beach. Again, we're going to see that east coast sea breeze really fire up late. And that is going to keep our rain chances elevated for us, getting back up to that 70% chance. For storms, again, right along the east coast of Florida. Moving into south-ish Florida, Bradenton into Sarasota, we're back up to the 70% shot. Again, we're still on the golf, uh, the golf side anyway. But as you get closer to actual south Florida, into Fort Lauderdale, 40% chance for rain. Into the Keys, we're on the drier side with just a stray shower or thunderstorm possible. Fort Myers, we're going to see those elevated storm chances as well, again, with that motion off of the Gulf of Mexico. All right. So now we're going to kind of start to get into the tropical outlook. I'll get you the full tropical outlook in a second. But first, I just wanted to show you our next system for the weekend. Here's kind of that cold front up here, increasing the rain chances. But here is our little tropical wave hanging out in between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Watch what happens as we get into the 20th. Notice there's nothing crazy blowing up here on this model. We do have a lot of green over Florida as we get into the weekend. This is on August 20th. So in three days from this video... Again, it's going to help to enhance our storm chances as we get into Sunday especially. It's going to be after the tropical wave moves through Florida and gets into the north or central west Gulf of Mexico. That's when development chances for some tropical development start to increase a little bit. The wind shear is kind of low out there. The water temperature is record warm. I showed you that cold front. That's really going to keep things stirred up in the atmosphere to really prevent that from developing into something tropical, like a tropical system anyway, with a closed center and all that jazz. So we're going to get the rain, which will be beneficial for sure. Here is the wide view now. Atlantic Basin overview. These blobs that you see on your screen here, these are drawn by the National Hurricane Center. They give their thoughts on percentages here, and they have some pretty decent percentages with those two X's out in the central and eastern Atlantic, a 60% chance. I think the bark is worse than its bite on these, though. There's a lot of dry air out there, and there's a lot of competing centers. There's not a lot of good, deep thunderstorm activity with these. There's a little swirl. We're going to break it, break those down in just one second. I think the one that I'm most concerned with right now is going to be our friends uh, towards Texas in this yellow blob. There's a 30% shot for development. Again, here is that wave that is going to increase the rain chances for Florida. But really, once you get out into here, the water temperatures are in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees. It's record hot in parts of the Gulf. And the wind shear really backs off by the time it gets to that point next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, early next week. So really going to watch that again for, I keep calling it a sneaky shot because models are biting that there's some development potential there. 
but a lot of times they struggle with a perfect environment with a weak tropical wave that's just barely showing up. So we're going to watch the trends closely. Again, this is not for Florida. We're going to get rain from this wave, but development potential is going to be there for the West Gulf Coast. Now, back to those two waves that I was just showing you here. We have those big L's. Those are our invests. That means that's the area of investigation. The Hurricane Center deems those. They start to run their tropical models on them, and we have both of them right here, southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Look at what we have, though. A ton of dry air for these things to just ingest. We love that. They can suck all that up for all we care, and hopefully it chokes them out. Now, the Saharan air layer, it's typically prolific in June or July. We really didn't have it much in June. It started to get a little bit more prolific in July, but while it was atypically low for June, now it's atypically high for the middle and latter stages of August. So it's going to be interesting to see if some of the forecast models that are kind of blowing some of these up are understanding that, hey, there's an abnormally dry air layer here that these things are going to be plowing right into. So that that is my hope there. Uh, none of these that are circled here appear to be a direct threat to Florida either. So again, as we roll through the middle of August over the next few days, we're looking okay. Here's the model forecast. It's, this is the European model spin. Big chunk of high pressure right there. Here is our disturbance is because there's a few little areas of spin in here. We've got one right there. Got another one about right there. Got another one here. And then there's that other wave. So we've got this kind of string bean thing across the entire central Atlantic. All of these are trying to compete to be the dominant center, especially those three. This one's kind of on its own. That one's likely going to go up in that direction anyway. But watch what happens. The Euro wants to get three storms out of this as we move through the 20th and or 21st. It does send one towards the Caribbean, towards the Windward Islands. as a tropical wave there. There's another one, and then there's a bigger one. That's the one that just rolled off of Africa. So there are three things. There's our other tropical wave that moves past Florida and then has the chance uh, to develop into the Gulf of Mexico. So again, watching all of that, but again, as we move through the 21st or 22nd of August, things are looking okay from a Florida perspective. We're watching this. This is typically when we see that giant increase of tropical activity. Tis the season. It's the peak of hurricane season. We are watching closely, but so far there are no immediate threats to Florida. We'll take this out even further. And again, things are still looking pretty good. There's even a cold front. Nice big front here. That's what we like because if anything out here wants to get real big and strong, it's going to feel that front and get on out of here. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up if you want to stay updated on all things Florida weather. And as we venture through the peak of hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. And we will catch you next time.